of this tension is... and friction and they would like uh, that that uh, ultimately a broad based uh, multi ethnic government which is perhaps uh, the only solution uh, to uh, uh, a government that can really govern afghanistan is what 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 is the um, the best way forward but with the northern alliance dominance over large swathes of afghanistan doesn't frankly iran russia even india have more of a say now on the future of afghanistan than pakistan does i don't think so i think uh, in the south and in the uh, center of afghanistan there are a lot of uh, um, local tribal leaders who have risen up against the taliban and that was something that was to be expected and uh, even uh, areas which which uh, border pakistan the pashtuns there uh, have risen up and the local tribal leaders have taken over their respective areas i don't think uh, indian uh, or even russian influence uh, would be so much that it should cause anyone any worry in any case we are quite sure that the afghans will only accept the government which they want and that is what everyone should want also uh, it should be according to the wishes of the afghan people general qureshi thank you very much for joining us Thank you very much. Well, we're going to pause here for some breaking news out of uh, out of Afghanistan. Carol Lynn's going to join us from Quetta, and indeed on that point of whether the Pashtuns are indeed rising up against the Taliban and whether Mullah Muhammad Omar is withdrawing from Kandahar. Carol, do you have any more information? Shiab, we've been following a, a series of meetings of Afghan tribal leaders who've been negotiating with the Taliban for them to put down their weapons and allow. Uh, a Pashtun agreement to take place so that tribal law can take effect in Kandahar. What we have just learned after a series of telephone calls and meetings is that uh, Mullah Omar apparently has agreed, according to these sources with these tribal leaders, he has agreed to withdraw, but he is handing over power inside of Kandahar to a Taliban military commander by the name of Haji Bashir, who took control, military control, of Kandahar very early this morning. What does this mean? Well, Haji Bashir is a member of the Norzai Pashtun tribe, and it was the Norzai Pashtun tribe representative that went in earlier this evening to negotiate a peaceful solution inside of Kandahar. What these Pashtun tribal leaders are hoping for is that this Taliban commander will set aside his loyalties to the Taliban and allow his tribal uh, affiliation to take over. The argument over whether Haji Bashir should have authority in Kandahar is Mullah Omar had wanted to withdraw. Haji Bashir said that if Mullah Omar withdraws, there would be no security force in place to keep uh, civil rest, unrest from rising in the city. So he felt that his role should be to stay in the city until the Pashtun tribal leaders figure out a way to fill the power vacuum. Uh, who are uh, very deeply aligned with Moscow in the past and they haven't forgotten the kind of defeat they suffered at the, at the hands of uh, uh, Mujahideen backed by America. So I think they are coming back and now that they are in control of, of Kabul, Bagram and some of the important airports, I think they are going to create uh, lots of difficulties. The Taliban, of course, uh, the backbone of support in many ways was the ISI, the security services of the Pakistan. Is there a sense then that if things on the ground continue to favor uh, Mr. Rabani and other elements of the Northern Alliance whom the ISA don't feel are particularly favorable to Pakistan. Is there a sense that then the ISA might resume support for those elements? Uh, no, I don't think so because uh, it depends. Uh, as far as uh, ISA support for Taliban is concerned, I can assure you that no such movement can be created in Afghanistan. This was the spontaneous response of the situation which prevailed in the mid-90s in Afghanistan. And the uh, Taliban emerged uh, as a force which was received with both arms by the Afghan people. They enjoyed uh, a, a considerable degree of support. I'm, I'm not saying absolute support because in some of the urban centers of Afghanistan, uh, uh, their uh, harsh manner of governance was not liked. But they did establish their rule over 95% of Afghanistan, not because they were being supported by ISI or Pakistan, but because people of Afghanistan accepted them. The, the Whoever now has to rule Afghanistan, the whole of it, has to be acceptable to Afghanistan. But then to what do we owe the, in, the complete collapse, basically, of the Taliban in Afghanistan and the apparent uh, welcoming across Afghanistan of 
either Northern Alliance forces or uh, Pashtun, uh, Pashtun um, leaders who have decided to uh, turn against the Taliban? Well, I disagree with that point of view. I don't subscribe to that at all. I think it's a change of posture on part of Taliban. I think from purely professional military point of view, uh, this should be understood that they have changed posture, they have not been defeated, they have been unseated. And that too because they decided to get themselves unseated. They were offering too many exposed targets while they were in control of cities. Now they have taken to the hills and uh, they, are, they, they will have the targets. But the consensus amongst many military analysts is simply that the Taliban, this isn't uh, the same situation uh, as the Soviet uh, invasion. This is a, a, a time when the Taliban no longer have the support of much of Afghanistan and crucially they no longer have the supplies from Pakistan. That's why it's very different and in fact their guerrilla war may not work this time around. Well I think somebody is closing eyes shut on this situation and uh, I think the American poor taxpayers are being taken for a ride. It's, it's an absolutely wrong assessment. When the Soviets invaded Afghanistan in 1979 the entire country was in the control of government which was friendly to Soviet Union and they had 300,000 troops under their command. The Soviets brought in 120,000 additional troops. They were well equipped, well trained, well armed and they were in total control of the country and yet Mujahideen started off. There was no support to them for a year and a half. The American support started uh, flowing in and that too in shape of small arms only handheld, shoulder fired. If you attribute this victory to Stinger, then Stinger, let me tell you, was introduced in the seventh year of war. But General Google, that may be, but the point was there was a common foreign enemy, and that, was, of course, was the Soviet Union. This time around, it's Afghans who are the enemy of the Taliban. That, that, there's a, it's simply a completely different equation. Uh, no, you will soon find that it, it will start turning around because Afghanistan will exercise a suction effect. And uh, already the Russians are trying to assert themselves because now that they are in control of Kabul, their uh, forces are lied to them and I think they are going to now uh, have a different mood and different uh, style of uh, dealing in the coalition. And uh, at some point in, in time, maybe Iran gets sucked in and uh, China gets sucked in. So it's not, it should not be taken, at, it's an evolving picture. I think the American analysts are looking at a still picture, but it is like a movie camera. The picture is moving, and it is going to evolve into the future. Do you think General Hamid Gul there, I'm just breaking into that interview there, Hamid Gul there speaking to me earlier. Well, let's get some analysis of what we've been hearing. Dilip Hira joins us from London, the noted author and commentator on Central and South Asian uh, affairs. Uh, Mr. Hira, thank you very much for joining us. The Pakistani government seems to be saying, oh, everything's happening exactly the plan. Uh, Hamid Gul there saying, the communists have taken over. Where, where is the Pakistan government line right now? I think it'd be much, <coughs> of course, everybody has to have a background. So, <coughs> in fact, you know, some of the uh, ex-communist uh, commanders joined up with the Taliban. Uh, the, the key point that comes through is the ethnic loyalties of the Afghan people. And even the story that came from your own correspondent, uh, Lynn, when she talks about Pashtun leaders not being, talking to Omar in Kandahar, etc., etc., it seems to me that uh, Pashtuns are trying to have a united front as an ethnic group whether they belong to Taliban or not is becoming incidental and so we go back to even the word Northern Alliance itself is very mi misleading. When you say alliance, alliance means more than one party but the, part, but the party which is really up front there and the one which is occupying, uh, or, uh, sorry not occupying, which is now in Kabul is a purely Tajik organization called jamiat e islami belonging to Professor um, Rabani. I don't think there are any Uzbek uh, uh, forces there. So. Ultimately, Afghans are falling back to a position which has been very uh, historical for them, ethnic identity. And, and indeed, are we now basically seeing an effective partition of North and South in Afghanistan between the, um, the, the what were once members of the Northern Alliance, as you say, though mainly uh, particularly centered around Mr. Rabani, and in the South, the Pashtuns now trying to counter that enormous influence that they have in the North. Uh, I mean, are we going to see both sides now just entrench themselves and, and start conf confronting each other? Absolutely. I think, that again, you know, of course, you talked to the two Pakistani <coughs> spokesmen or you know, Pakistanis who are involved in the situation. 
And from Pakistan's point of view, their strength is the Pashtun ethnic group. And we have to remember the Pashtuns are the largest group. They are not uh, more than 50%, they are about 45%, but they are the largest. Also, they live in a contiguous area. They live in the east and they live in the south, and they are next to Pakistan. Also, the, everything that being talked about, about, you know, Pakistanis being uh, helping Taliban, etc., etc., please remember there is a no man's land between Pakistan and Afghanistan. And there are seven Pashtun tribes which are governed by their own law. And that is where precisely Taliban is going to use that particular area as the rare base from which they may be able to launch guerrilla warfare come the spring. But I mean, that is we're going forward. But in terms of specifics, what is the strength of Pakistan? In Pakistan, there are Pashtuns. They are in the northwest frontier. So Pashtun ethnic identity is the one which is the strength of Pakistan, and that is why Pakistan is very important. And if any arrangement which excludes the Pashtuns, or which excludes Pakistan, will not last very long, you know, and try to run Afghanistan without the Pashtuns is like trying to run Britain without the English. Uh, but of course, I mean, things have then obviously changed quite a bit in the last few days. Only a few days ago, it looked like Pakistan had basically uh, lost their complete strategic importance in this battle as the Northern Alliance were moving through large portions of Afghanistan. Now, with the Pashtuns organizing themselves, po possibly as a result of the Northern Alliance advance, uh, the Pakistan's back in the picture again, isn't it? Absolutely. I think ultimately, as you know, Geography is very important, you know, and if you are Pakistan, this very long 1500 mile border with Afghanistan, therefore that's your strength. And remember also, Pakistan has its own strategic plan or strategic thinking, which is very simple. Pakistan is enemical with India, and if there's a fight with India, Pakistan is a very narrow country. Therefore, Pakistan needs a rare base, what you call a strategic depth, where they can withdraw, and that is why. That, that will not change at all. No matter what happens today, tomorrow, five years from now, that won't change at all. And therefore, they will continue to exercise as much influence in Afghanistan as they can because it's in their own interest, self-interest. And that is why they have been very... Delapiro, we're going to have to stop there. Focused. We're out of time, but I think, right. I think we've got the, what the analysis is. Thank you, Delapiro, and all our guests. The news is next on CNN. Yeah.